Hi, my name is Adrienne Castle. I'm a student in Miami University's Global Field Studies Program and professor of English at Sinclair Community College. My master plan involves researching how nature journaling can foster eco-literacy. I concur with this quote by biologist and Pulitzer Prize winner E.O. Wilson, but I would argue that there's no need to wait for life after death to enjoy walking and recording the many miracles in the world. With just a little bit of time and very little monetary investment, we can all enjoy this bliss. And more importantly, this process of daily record keeping can contribute to the field of conservation by teaching us firsthand how ecological and environmental processes support us in our daily lives and recreational pursuits. I suppose the first nature journal may have been a cave painting, something like this one, that is found in the Chalet Cave in southern France. This painting of an owl is interesting because it is depicted with its head seen from the front, but its body from the back. It may well be the earliest presentation of the bird's unique ability to turn its head through 180 degrees, and it illustrates one of the important benefits of nature journaling. The intense focus required to describe or draw something often leads to new knowledge. The appeal of the Nature Journal, says Claire Walker Leslie in her book, Keeping a Nature Journal, is its flexibility. People have used journals to enter a list of birds seen at certain hours. Some count insects in a square yard or field and record their, other, uh, record their findings. Others keep moon phase and weather charts. Some people write poems, draw poems, or carefully diagram and draw a dead call they've come across on the beach. You can use the journal however you like. In this presentation, I will share with you my own nature journaling journey and some ideas on how you might create your own. My nature journaling practice started out as a way to ground myself through the grief of a failed marriage. I'd record the weather and moon phases in a little journal that I bought for $5, and I'd record some natural history from a daily walk. However, through this simple daily practice, I found myself le less focused on my grief and more aware of the small changes in the seasons, the weather, the constellation, the phases of the moon, and I started to feel the rotations of the earth and how those cycles were something very much a part of my own life. I also found myself more involved in natural pursuits. For instance, I managed to land a job as a caretaker for a 92-acre short grass prairie in Adams County, Ohio. And while I had no idea what I was supposed to do as the caretaker, I did know it would involve learning about the wide variety of animal and plant life that shared the prairie habitat. For instance, I knew that I had to learn to identify and name the 91 species of butterflies that had been discovered living there. But how? Two things happened as I contemplated my new role. One was I applied to the Miami University's Global Field Studies program to learn more about how to conduct field studies on the prairie. And two, I decided to turn my morning pages into a more organized and focused record of what I was seeing. To do this, I researched various ways that other naturalists, biologists, and conservationists keep their nature journals, or field notes, as I learned they are called and I discovered I wasn't the only one thinking about how others kept their notes. Michael Canfield, a lecturer at Harvard University, was thinking about this too, and he has collected 12 different examples in a book titled Field Notes on Science and Nature. The collection includes examples from birders, biologists, paleontologists, ecologists, conservationists, and others who have contributed to a better understanding of the world through their research. What I found fascinating was that although all of the 12 contributors had a different way of keeping their notes, all but one said that taking a notebook and pencil into the field is better than relying on digital equipment. Besides the technical difficulties of the equipment, they argue, the pencil and notebook leads to closer observations and more accurate details. The cover of the book, an illustration of Basilix Lizard, comes from award-winning teacher Jenny Keller's journal. As you can tell, sketching is important to Keller, and she uses her illustrations in her journal to point out ideas that came to her through her observations. By the way, she uh, provides simple instructions on how to draw and says that even if you don't know how to draw, you can use sketches in your journals. If you're not convinced about her argument concerning drawing, you may take inspiration from Anna Baron Meyer's journals. Behrens Myers uses a Polaroid camera to capture visual records for her notebook, and she tapes them in alongside her notes. Behrens Meyer is a paleontologist, and she thinks of her journals as time capsules. This page is from the notebook she kept while doing field work in Kenya. 
Other contributors at Canfield's book have different approaches to using their notebooks. Some contributors simply make lists. Most of them include some kind of sketch, albeit maybe not as beautiful as Keller's, but all of them discuss the importance of their notes for future understanding of the world. John D. Perrin and James Patton, biologists who work together on the Grinnell Reef Survey Project in California, call their notebooks Letters to the Future, and they cite the importance of the field notebooks from the original Grinnell Survey Project started in 1910 to their work in resurveying the same areas. The 1910 project was started by Joseph Grinnell, and it is this system that I have found the most helpful for my purposes, tracking my work in the Global Field Studies Program and my work on the prairie. This is zoologist Joseph Grinnell, and 100 years ago, this visionary first director of the Museum of Vertebrae Zoology at the University of California organized teams of research biologists to fan out across California trapping and preserving the animals of the state. With famously rigorous attention to detail, Grinnell recorded every possible piece of information about each specimen. According to Alexis Madrigal, who wrote about the Grinnell system on Wired Science, the Grinnell system is designed to facilitate scientific investigation and the publication of observations, something that anyone can do to make significant contributions to science. The idea is to turn you from a passive recorder of information into a participant in a dialogue with nature. Rather than just recording bits of data, you poke, explore, and cross-examine nature in order s to sluice nuggets of knowledge from what you see. It takes a little bit of time to learn how to use this system and get it set up, but it is worth it and the best teaching tool I have discovered. The Grinnell system has four main components. The field notebook, the field journal, the species account, and the catalog. Each one has their purpose in the system, and each one can be customized to meet your particular needs. The field notebook on the left here is where you collect the raw data. It rides in your pocket along with a pen. As you spend time in the field, make short but clear notes of what you see and the general conditions. It is a reminder for you to use when you put your observations down in the field journal at the end of the day. The field journal, picture on the right, is the core of your notes. When you have finished your observations for the day, sit down with your field notebook and any other items pertaining to your observations and expand your cursory notes and memory jogs into a coherent account of the day's observations. You will notice that this page has a distinctive format that includes the observer's name and the year. The date and location have also been noted on the page in the usual Grinnell format. The system does not use page numbers, but tracks pages chronologically. The format helps to ensure that if pages get separated, the important where and when will not be lost. The species account, seen on the left, is essentially an index to your notes according to species observed. Each time a species appears in your field journal, make a short notation of it on the appropriate page on your species account. Each species gets its own page. Use a horizontal line to mark each entry, note the date, location, and a sentence or two of descriptive text to summarize what you saw. On the right, the catalog tracks things you collect. When you find something and bring it home, assign it a number. Start with the number one and continue numbering samples successively until you die. Mark your sample with its catalog number and or use a tag to record essential data. Leave some space for specific identification later on. Gr Grinnell's records now form an incredibly valuable data set that just keeps appreciating. Jim Patton Director Emeritus of the Museum and a new team of research biologists have been hitting the fields of California to replicate Grinnell's earlier study of the faunal conditions of the state. John Muir, the inspiration for and president first president of the Sierra Club, sought to preserve wild places and is considered one of the founders of the modern environmental movement. Muir wrote in his journals about the beauty he saw in nature. He also drew sketches detailing information about plants, animals, mountains, and landscapes. He used his journals to compose letters to friends, articles, and books to share. Muir's journals gave him a wealth of recorded experience from which 10 books and over 200 articles were published. We continue to, to gain insight into nature's beauty and importance in our lives from Muir's writing. 
Aldo Leopold's notebooks are being used in a project started by his daughter Nina to trace the changes in the ecological relationships of the plants and animals in Wisconsin. And Henry David Thoreau's journals are being used by zoologists to track the effects of climate change on the phenology of the East Coast. It is because of the accurate records of these and other naturalists in the past that current research can be completed and a better understanding of how to best conserve this wonderful planet we live on can be achieved. That's where you come in. I hope this talk has inspired you to consider keeping your own nature journals if you don't already and thinking of those notes as letters to the future. Several organizations such as the National Phenological Network and Cornell University's eBird provides provide ways for citizen sciences to help contemporary conservationists. I end with this quote from E.B. White. I arise in the morning torn between a desire to save the world and a desire to savor it. This makes it hard to plan the day. If I had a chance, I would tell White that with nature journaling, you can do both, save the world and savor it. Thank you.